Hi, I'm Michael Ducey, Senior Manager of Managed OpenShift Black Belts here at Red Hat. And with me today is Narav. Hi, my name is Neerav Doshi, and I'm part of Manage OpenShift Black Belt team. And today we are going to talk about Red Hat OpenShift Dev Spaces. So Narav, we talk a lot about how we enable developers to move faster and ship code faster and increase, increase developer velocity. What are some of the ways that we can do that with OpenShift uh, application platform and OpenShift Dev Spaces? So yeah, uh, so as you know, like uh, we have managed OpenShift application platform, which is a turnkey platform. And basically it serves two uh, different um, uh, personas, right? It is the developer and it is an ID ops. So from a developer standpoint, we provide all the tooling that's required to build the application. And from an IT ops perspective, it's basically we take care of the infrastructure so they don't have to um, uh, worry about the infrastructure portion of it. Right. So if we think about developers and the concerns of a developer, you know, developers have kind of this, what we call the inner development loop cycle, right? So they'll code a new feature. Uh, then, uh, you know, once they've coded it, they think it works, they'll do... Uh, some sort of validation or hopefully doing some sort of uh, unit testing. Uh, and then, you know, they'll debug their code because, you know, we always think it works yeah. right the first time, but it doesn't. And then uh, they'll go through the process of, you know, refactoring. So how can we kind of take this process and kind of encapsulate it inside of Red Hat OpenShift? So this is the basically the inner loop where a developer is uh, very focused on basically writing codes. They don't care about what the infrastructure is. And this is where uh, the dev space. So the dev space uh, sits within, uh, within manage open shirts. So that's where basically the dev space sits in. And when you think about it, the developer has worked on their code. It works awesome but then it, they need to commit to the repository. And once they commit to the repository, it goes through the CI CD pipeline and then- And we would call that the outer loop. Outer loop. And right. that's where they would basically uh, uh, publish their code and uh, uh, test it and then deploy it. So from a dev space perspective, uh, basically what we provide is uh, when you think about some of the challenges that companies face. So developers, if your company has a lot of developers, then they have a lot of resources that are tied up. If they code on their la machines. Yeah, uh, and for a lot of people, this is usually done on their laptop. Yeah, so then the, sometimes that code is not secure to the standards and it's, it's lying on somebody's laptop. And then the third and most foremost thing is uh, many a times you have heard um, uh, a, a war between developers and IT ops in terms of... Uh, like the developer says that my code works on my machine, but as as soon as you move it to production, it is like uh, there's something off. Right. As We're fun live saying the old thing. Yeah. But so that's why what we are doing is we are taking the development process more towards the production. And that that's the way basically um, yeah, you can de debug any issues that come early on. Okay. So walk me through this in practice. So what are the IT ops? people need to do to enable this? So they've installed the operator, the dev spaces operator, and then what, what are kind of the steps there and then how do developers consume it and use it? Yeah, so from an IT ops perspective, they will install a dev space operator and they will provide all the CLIs, the binaries that are uh, that used and the libraries uh, uh, that, uh, that are required to, uh, for the developer. So basically the tool chain. Oh, all the tool chain. And then from a developer standpoint, for example, if they uh, define that they need, needed to build a Node.js application or they have a particular IDE in mind, they can basically use uh, that to spin up a container uh, within, within uh, the managed OpenShift platform. And so what's running inside of that container? So inside of that container, basically you have the, uh, the pods with the, the Node.js application uh, you also have the ide that you want to provision and basically you can use that 
uh, as a workspace. So this is your workspace, predefined workspace that you can work on, build your code, and then you can share it on with other developers. Uh, so that way, it's a centralized repository of uh, what you build. So all the work moves off of the developer's laptop and into our cluster where we know there's security and compliance. We know where the code is going to be stored. It's not going to be taken off of someone's laptop or moved around or anything right. like that. So all the development work is done here. So uh, I'm a developer, right? And uh, so I went through this cycle. Uh, I got the feature ready. Now I'm ready to share it with other people and get further feedback and testing. So usually what that, what we call the outer loop, looks like is the developer is going to commit their code. Uh, and then that'll go through some sort of a build process, which is usually our CI CD or our CI continuous integration system. It'll go through some sort of testing, which is when we start getting into our CD pipeline. And then we'll eventually go and deploy this application out. And then of course the cycle repeats itself, right? So how, what other tooling do we have besides, so this is a neat idea where we can develop, but now I actually have to push this into production. And I guess the other thing that I would say about this is through this cycle is I don't have any backing services. So a lot of applications are dependent upon backing services. So before we talk about this commit, how can I actually test against those backing services so I know more likely that this test will pass? Yeah. So basically you can deploy additional containers to all the different services that you need. And like, so for example, if you need a backend service or you need to have a, data, a database uh, uh, that you want, you can basically deploy containers and test it out there. And uh, that's the way, basically, once those are there, you can push it to Git and uh, commit, commit your... So I'm knowing, using known versions of those services that I know that are actually probably running in production and I can run my uh, test workloads against those particular that's right. backend services. Okay, so we've tested against our backend services, we're ready to commit our code and we've committed it up. So how can we help with this kind of outer loop cycle? So, so besides the dev spaces, we also have something called OpenShift pipeline operator. Basically that will help you to build images, right? And then uh, from there, you also have uh, a GitOps operator. So what you can do is basically the pipelines will basically create the image, push it to a repository and create a, con a container. Whereas uh, with GitOps, what it will do is it will basically detect the changes, mm -hmm. update the manifest and uh, push a newer version. Uh, so if you have the version two, it will, uh, you can push another version of it and uh, that's the way it would detect all those changes. Okay, so I do the commit into Git, and then this commit fires a webhook into pipelines, right? Then it's gonna build my image, put it in the container registry. GitOps actually deploys that image out. But now I've got two versions of my code. How can I control the traffic? Because like um, what you know, a lot of uh, organizations like to do is they like to do some sort of blue-green deployment where you've got two versions of the application. Right you send 20% of the traffic in one direction, you send 80 to the other, and you get some validation whether the application is going to work or not. Yeah, so that, that's where we have another operator called service, service mesh, where you can basically control the traffic and uh, basically just, well, we will control the traffic and uh, with GitOps actions, you can basically send 20% of the traffic here and test your code as well as 80% of the traffic here. So it, it basically that's another operator that's all built within the managed OpenShift platform. So there are there are a lot lot of things that the developers can basically use to uh, within within uh, within the, the platform itself, and then they don't have to build it uh, uh, on the other laptop. I'm worried about all the HUD and. And I think also from an IT ops perspective, you know, usually piecing all of this together, it takes a lot of work as That's well. true. That's so true. Being, having the ability to deploy these operators and really turn on the application platform for developers can be really, really powerful for the IT ops teams as well. That's right. Thanks so much for coming and talking to us today about OpenShift DevSpaces, Narav. Thank you for watching as well. 
Uh, if you want any more information about Red Hat's products or services, visit our website, of course, at redhat.com.